are listening to the Ed and Ethan Bitcoin Cast. Yeah, ah, I just about forgot the name of it. Actually, I was <laughs> hoping that you remembered it because I didn't remember it. Indeed, for Wednesday, February twenty seventh, two thousand and thirteen, it's a show from Ed and Ethan here, all about Bitcoin. Why? Because we can't stop talking no, we about can't Bitcoin. Stop talking, but uh, we do like to hear the sweet music. Uh, do, uh, do, uh, do. Freaking glow sticks. Yeah. E. Yeah, I'll get the E. All you the get the glow sticks, and we'll be all set. This is great. I'm, yeah. Make sure we get some more people in here, too, though, if we do that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you don't like the <laughs> private raves thing? Okay. No. Fine. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, like, a, okay, we, we, we confine ourselves sometimes, like, what, uh, five, ten minutes total in a three hour show of yes. talking about Bitcoin because yeah. we've got so much other stuff to talk about. This is our solution not to shut up and confine ourselves. <laughs> But to talk more, it's like a, it's like a <laughs> it's like a C list, B list, C list. <laughs> right, we've got B list. So this is C. Ah, Bitcoin Cast. Oh, ah, see? oh look C. at that. It's oh, B C C. Okay, ah, boom. Right Good, um, amazing. Let's uh, let's start out with uh, uh, hoarding Bitcoin. Okay, is hoarding Bitcoin a bad thing? Some people would say yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. Why would I they would say, say no? Okay. Well, why? Well, the reason. Why? The reason that. Okay. Go ahead. Why, why? Why do you think people would say hoarding Bitcoin is a bad thing? Because then the price goes up and not enough people are using it? Right. Well, because a because lot of people shuts, want... Shutting people out? Yeah. Well, a lot of people want Bitcoin to work as a currency, not just a money, right? Because mm -hmm. Bitcoin has been built that way. It's It's been built to be both a currency and a money, right? So... Mm -hmm. Uh, and where a you payment have, method and a payment method. Right. So Three where things. you have gold as uh, a money, for instance, it's harder to move around. So then the currency comes out, paper backed by mm -hmm, gold, mm -hmm. so that trade is easier, right? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I guess uh, the, the, the reason that people want uh, people to not hoard Bitcoins is because they want that currency quality now. They want it as soon as possible. Um, and I think that's unrealistic. We have to understand why Bitcoin is working. It's not just working because people are enthusiastic about it. There are reasons that Bitcoin is fundamentally becoming stronger and stronger a wealth vehicle. And part of that is how it develops as a currency. Look, the more people that hoard Bitcoin, the less uh, abundant it is for the general market. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. the greater the value becomes. The mm -hmm. greater the value becomes, those who are hoarding it have a greater incentive to sell it. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's like an equilibrium that finds its own balance. As as value increases, more Bitcoin is disseminated into the market. More Bitcoin is disseminated into the market, and thusly more people can use it as a currency. And so, eventually, it will become uh, widespread enough, widely adopted enough, to be commonly used day-to-day -day as a currency. It's just not there yet, but is it becoming a currency? I think it is. Yeah, we're referencing uh, Mises... The MisesCircle.org article talking mm. about hoarding Bitcoins and the Fed and uh, meaning and the Federal Reserve Banking System and hoard Bitcoins. Right. Well, I mean, okay, so they're they're talking about how um, the strategy behind collapsing mm, yes. Here central go. banks yes. has always been, you know, use gold and silver, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, the the problem with well, yeah, the, the freedom freedom fiends and um, some other podcasters, I'm pretty sure they have some uh, Bitcoin uh, commercials that are saying, "You want to end the government's tyranny? Stop using their money." And mm -hmm. how do we do that? We use Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think I think that's probably or, or gold and silver or or labor dollars or any type of alternative currencies that are not monopolized by the government. Well, I think gold and silver can be monopolized by a government because look, I mean, it's happened obviously in the past where that's governments true. have passed that's laws true. to confiscate gold and silver, and precious metals. Nineteen thirty-three. Yeah. yeah, in the United States, that had to that. Good old uh, Roosevelt. What he did, what he did was he got elected. And the first thing he did in his hundred days, he he <laughs> he made alcohol legal again. This is the crazy part. FDR is remembered for making alcohol legal. That is his biggest achievement. And then right after that, he makes gold illegal. What? It's, what? Huh? You know, that's huh? that's something that, uh, <laughs> like a big bait and switch in governments, right? Mm -hmm. is, is I'm going to give you this one special interest mm -hmm. thing so I can do these other three or four things that you wouldn't normally like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but okay, in regards to Bitcoin specifically, so government can't confiscate it. There, nope. there's a, that's a difference no between way. gold and silver and Bitcoin. Gold and silver can be confiscated. Bitcoin cannot be. I mean, they can pass laws, but... 
it's, how can they confiscate? See, that's like, a, I, oh, see, that's the thing. I was kind of speculating this the other day. If if Bitcoin, if they make Bitcoin illegal, then legitimate businesses are not going to be able to provide payment with Bitcoin, are they? Then are they going to shun that or stay, stay away, or would they continue to do that, or are we just going to see a huge agorist market be built up on the internet so much that it's just going to overtake the regular market? That's what I think I'm would happen. So. Look, what do you think if if taxes were made optional? Would the government <laughs> would the government be able to it's collect? Not tax anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if funding government became optional, there you oh, go. There. Would government be funded? I don't think it would be, because it doesn't provide value for service. If it would be, the people who are left paying for it, holy crap, would they be paying a lot? Yeah, and getting very little. Yeah, that's true. They'd be paying very expensive service provision comes from government, right? So I think that what happens with Bitcoin is. Because it can be made anonymous, it, Bitcoin is not entirely anonymous, right? It's an open network, so you can see where coins That's travel. True. That's true. So in some instances, you might be able to piece together uh, how a coin is traded and who's connected to it. It would be very but, di- difficult, but it could be done. But what about the Tor network? Mm. On the Tor network, you are completely invisible on the Tor network. Yeah, well, to be fair, if the Tor network is used exclusively for Bitcoin, then the Bitcoin network would fail. Uh, it, it needs yeah. it, it needs to be able to... Uh, trace uh the path of coins right like the, the the bitcoin network needs to be able to see where coins are going but that doesn't mean that you can't make it anonymous so if you do use the tor network to say sign up for a wallet on an online secure wallet service mm-hmm, mm-hmm. then you're anonymous right it goes to that wallet service but who knows who signed up to that wallet mm-hmm. service, right? Mm-hmm. So there are ways of making Bitcoin anonymous. Right now, it's kind of pseudo-anonymous, but it's still very difficult to find out who's doing what on the Bitcoin network. Um, but yet, for that reason, I think that Bitcoin uh, can topple a currency because it it's making the value shift in different currencies optional. So if Bitcoin expresses more value as a secure wealth store... That's just where wealth's going to go. That's a market at work. Well, just this past week, Bitcoin hit another milestone. Well, not not uh, historical milestone. Thirty dollars. That's a that's a somewhat of a milestone. Mm-hmm. Over three hundred million dollars now is in is in total Bitcoin holdings. Yeah. Well, I the market cap correct. now for Bitcoin at at over three hundred million is larger today than when Bitcoin first hit its price spike at thirty six dollars. Because how does that work? Explain well, that to me. I'll okay. So that. because when when Bitcoin first hit its price spike at $36 before tumbling to $2 and what was it? $2 and 14 cents yeah. US. Mm-hmm. Uh, at that time, there were far fewer Bitcoins in existence than there are today, right? So uh, okay. I can't remember how many were issued, but I know that the market cap at the time of the price spike was uh, a total value of like $225 million, right? Mm-hmm. So okay. Okay. Uh, today, uh, with with twice as many coins out there, let's say, um, the price cap of the entire Bitcoin market, the value of the entire Bitcoin market is about $325 $325 million. Mm. So I'm just basically what this boils down to is that there are wider adoption rates. So more people have Bitcoin. Um, But that is a good good thing or a bad thing? That's a good thing. That's a very good thing. Why is that a good thing? The wider the base of, I mean, if we want to kind of describe it in non-financial terms, the wider the Bitcoin base, the... Uh, the less impact a price fall will be. It has a wider floor to fall on, a greater cushion, right? Um, But I mean, that's... So this is not a speculative bubble. I, well, there are, it depends on how you define a, a speculative bubble, right? Are you going to define a speculative bubble as something that results in a price correction of, say, 10 bucks right now in this current paradigm mm-hmm. of the $30 mm-hmm. neighborhood? I mean, if it drops to $20, that's a one-third loss in value in the market. So is that a speculative bubble? I'd say, yeah, it kind of is. But... Um, this is kind of, it's, I would just buy more. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Well, this is what I'm trying to say is that these are fundamentals as to how the Bitcoin market is working and evolving. Bitcoin is not a matured market. It's not. Um, it's it's also why I think that it hasn't gotten to currency status yet is because the market has not matured. It's got a lot of evolutionary steps to go through. Uh, and those evolutionary steps mean an ever increasing value, right? Uh, overall, uh, mm-hmm. there, there will be drops, uh, drops and bumps. It's fine. That's just part of how it's working. But Hoarding helps that. Hoarding is what increases uh, the level of scarcity, right? So 
I mean, uh, essentially, uh, and we've got a great chart. Actually, let's make this chart the picture That's for the, the video. picture on the YouTube. Yes. Okay, sure. Okay, That's a good idea. Okay, uh, so yeah. you, you check this chart out. It's a great flow chart. So how does hoarding affect Bitcoin? Basically, hoarding increases the Bitcoin price. This increases mining profitability and the media attention because uh, something that's increasing more and more value, people are more and more interested in. So media starts to talk about it. Um, the mining profitability, as it goes up, more people become involved in mining, so more computers jump on the network, increasing the security of the network because it becomes more difficult to collapse the Bitcoin network with a 51% attack. Mm. And we can talk about a 51% attack. It's it's probably the greatest problem that exists in terms of uh, the potential collapse of Bitcoin. No, right? total hashing power. That means that the more computers come on the network, the harder it is to mine a Bitcoin. That's right. 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 Okay. So, so so I mean, so, and that that also makes the Bitcoin market even more secure. Then that's right. Okay. The more the more computers there are on the network, the more computers there are auditing the network from second to second. Right? Like uh, if you think like what Bitcoin what Bitcoin huh. mining computers are doing is wow. the same as uh, the Visa computer. Yeah. Right. So the Visa computer yeah. when you swipe your Visa card, Charlie Schramm described it to us this way: uh, is your transaction sent off to Visa's big central computer? Visa audits the transaction; it's legitimized and then sent back is approved right uh essentially these computers are auditing the network and confirming the transactions that's what they're doing so we have perceived legitimacy how does i guess more security yep. more media attention higher prices more legitimacy just that's overall. Right. Right. Well, because it's trying to work as a currency in a wealth store. So if it's working as a currency in a wealth store, there it is. It's legitimate, right? This this flowchart reminds me of the cycle of life. <laughs> <laughs> so well, we have business adoption okay. and then we have user adoption. Well, that business adoption one is important, right? Because this is the one that's missing right now. And the reason mm. being is because we haven't cycled through this chart quite often enough, which is why I call this a maturing market, right? We, we do talk about some on the main show. If you haven't heard about it, it's Ed and Ethan at Ed and Ethan dot com. <laughs> Ed and Ethan podcast. Um, we talk about business adoption. The last story we're going to talk about, we talk about uh, a gold a gold uh, bug portfolio that is being boost, bolstered by uh, some Bitcoins. Mm, yeah. So yeah, that's cool. So yeah, but basically the more often we cycle through that chart, the more uh, the more legitimate Bitcoin becomes and the more widespread it becomes. And thusly, the more widespread it is, the more attractive it becomes mm -hmm. uh, for a business to accept payment in that form, right? So, I mean... Uh, wow. Well, can we, do you want to segue to this? Sure, yeah. Let's go to... Uh, well, Kim.com is a great pioneer in uh, internet development, uh, internet technology development and, internet and the free spread of information information right mm -hmm. so kim.com has mega a which new, the new site that has come out after his old site mega upload was <laughs> attacked by the federal by the governments the yeah. governments around the world and he actually i think he he was building this as he was involved in his court i think he's still involved in his court yeah case, he is he but is. it's basically just a big f you to the to the court it's, it's hilarious like, i'm just gonna Isn't make this hilarious? business that you've declared illegal and, while i'm being prosecuted for it <laughs> <laughs> and and the way he's going about it this time full encryption oh yeah well he did have some problems when this first came up mega when first when mega first came out uh basically his uh boasting about encryption kind of was served as a challenge and somebody did break mm. the encryption oh, so really? they had to they had to beef it up again hmm. um but yeah so anyway the point here is that mega is a uh a wide uh it, it's a widely used service already. Mm -hmm. Lots of people have signed up It is up so to cool. It. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, you get lots of storage, lots of traffic for, it's, for and reasonable it, fees. And you can share your stuff like instant messaging wise within the user interface on the web. It's really cool, man. You should really check it out. Yeah, well, I, I, I encourage you to check yeah. it out. Um, I encourage everybody to check it out. Definitely awesome. But point here is that he's accepting Bitcoin, right? It's a it's a worldwide business. It's it's a fairly large business, um, and he's accepting Bitcoin as payment for uh, uh, signing up to this website and getting online storage and all that good stuff, right? Um, so I think it's uh, just over half a Bitcoin for one month. Uh, that's probably changed actually since yeah, I was last, last say. we looked at it. Uh, yeah. Um, but anyway, this, this is, this is being measured at $16, 1632. Oh, 
for one bit sixteen dollars a bitcoin. Okay. So wow, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, definitely has changed since we last looked at it. But uh, but yeah, basically, so this is this is the kind of thing that's going to happen more. However, here's another problem, right? And this again, why I come to why this is a maturing market? This is a technology service, and there are lots of technology services that uh, are accepting Bitcoin, right? Like if you uh, if you look up if you just Google Bitcoin merchants, there's a, a wiki page that lists all, every single merchant that wants to be listed. Oh, I was incorrect, Ethan. It's oh. tw- they're measuring it out 20 euros per one Bitcoin. Oh, huh? oh, okay. So this is fairly recent then. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, the... Uh, sorry, I, I had you, to correct you myself. You again. <laughs> Damn it, sorry. <laughs> no worries. Um, no, the... the, uh, the Okay, so there are lots of technology businesses, online businesses. You can buy chocolates. Mm-hmm. You can, oh, you can yes, buy socks, right? right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's kind of niche businesses, right? There aren't many that are adopting Bitcoin right now. I mean, if you think about it as a global currency, well, less than 0.001% of businesses around mm-hmm. the globe are accepting mm-hmm. Bitcoin, right? But it's, it's, it's vastly, it's vastly and fastly becoming... Is that fastly? Is that even a word? No. No, okay. <laughs> so it's... <laughs> It's, it's it's quickly be, it's quickly becoming <laughs> oh God. it's quickly becoming the currency of the internet. Yeah, ah. no, it is becoming the currency of the internet. But look, we Bitcoin proponents want it to become the currency of your local grocery store. Right? Yes, definitely. Um, and that's what we're looking for. It will happen if Bitcoin continues to evolve as it is. You know what I just kind of thought about? Does this, does, because Bitcoin, um, I saw a thread on Reddit talking about how Bitcoin and uh, philosophy with regards to Bitcoin and uh, political allegiance and whatnot. I would say, I would say that Bitcoin has some, somewhat of a philosophy of anarcho capitalism, mm. anar- agorism. I would say that more, the, the more ideas of Bitcoin spreads, the more ideas of anarcho-capitalism would spread and agorism because really Bitcoin is agorism, right? And agorism is... Can yeah, you explain well, agor- agorism real quick? Well, I mean, to me, I, I'm not, I'm not going to give you a technical definition of agorism, but to me, agorism basically boils down to making money under the radar of the government, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. That's pretty much what it is. Pretty much what it is. Um, under the can, table, under the table, the black market. Yeah. I mean, we can, we can say that that's anarcho-capitalism i'm sure some people would probably or just call it life there you go perfect <laughs> um but no it's a uh bitcoin offers that and, and and that's you know that runs up against legal tender laws for sure um but you know what it's because like i said bef- before because it's kind of pseudo anonymous because you can make it anonymous because you can hide your wealth in it i don't think that mm-hmm. that i don't think legal tender laws are going to have a huge effect on it before uh a country's currency starts to become kind of shaky in comparison to bitcoin mm-hmm. right? well we saw in iran <laughs> the, the, the iranian the iranian currency <laughs> yeah. after the, the recent uh, not recent not so recent a couple months ago i guess it was they had sanctions being imposed on them by the un um and their currency certain items uh, started to just increase like crazily. So started people started to put their money into Bitcoin because they knew that the value was going to stay instead of their fiat currency being manipulated by the being manipulated by the government was fluctuating wildly out of control. I think thirty percent inflation or some yeah. crazy thing. I think like that. one of the one of my favorite parts when we were reading that story, uh, you and I. I think one of my favorite parts of that story was when the the real they said it was it was valued <laughs> at a certain mark against the U.S. dollar. Yeah, yeah. And meanwhile, on the street, it was trading for like uh, Double one that third that value or something oh, okay, against yeah. the US dollar it was like people were like no that's not really what it's worth that's what the central bank says it's worth but really this is I crap think, <laughs> I think I think US dollars in Iran are like totally hardcore legal too like pretty, it, yeah, yeah I think like you get are. your can cut off or some crazy thing like oh, that crazy man but um, mining are we gonna talk about mining oh yeah and Bitcoin? Okay. well yeah so we talk about mining because it's you know the security of the network that kind of thing uh, and something that uh, some people may not know about our application specific integrated service Circuits. Uh, 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 what? Blah, 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 blah. So, bas- what, what these are, application-specific integrated circuits are What's the computer chips. For that? ASIC. ASIC. Okay. ASIC. Um, ASICs are, are built to uh, perform a specific computing task, okay. right? And this isn't new for Bitcoin. No, no. Well, it's not a new concept. This is okay. new for Bitcoin. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So sorry. Uh, yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so for Bitcoin, basically, these chips are coming out uh, that are meant specifically to solve the cryptographic puzzles that computers have to solve to uh, audit the Bitcoin network. So. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, okay. W- what does that would, mean? What does that mean? Audit the Bitcoin network. The hashing. Uh, uh, so uh, verifying each transaction that takes okay. place on the network, right? Okay. Um, so I remember explaining this to you as, uh, say, if you have a computer with 100 points of computing power, we'll just simplify points. these terms, okay. right? Okay. Um, then you're getting uh, however many Bitcoins every 10 minutes. 25 Bitcoins, I think, is the uh, number of Bitcoins from a block right now, right? So you're getting 25 Bitcoins every 10 minutes. Um, Man. That would be so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but at that point, also, Bitcoins would probably be worth pennies. So, yep, that's true. Um, so then I come on the network with another computer exactly like yours, another 100 points of computing power. Now we are both solving cryptographic puzzles to try and get that block every 10 minutes. We're essentially competing for it. And statistically, it'll work out that there's even distribution between the two of us, right? Okay. So extrapolate this to what we have today, which are hundreds of thousands of computers around planet Earth that are participating in this Bitcoin network auditing. And those it's the same thing, 25 coins every 10 minutes, um, and it's uh, statistically spread evenly across the mining pool, hmm. or the mining power of the network. Okay, right? okay. Um, so as Bitcoin becomes worth more and more, People mm-hmm. want more and more to be engaged in the network. Uh, and as more and more people do become engaged in the network, it becomes more and more competitive. And so there's suddenly a market incentive to build powerful computers. So how this okay. started was you'd be able to get a bunch of Bitcoins just from your laptop, right? P- using your processor power. That's then kind it, of what I'm doing right now with my, my well, computer, but it, it's got a that very was powerful the second video stage. card. That was the second stage of evolution okay. was using okay. video cards, right? Video cards, it was found that their 3D processing power was very nice it was uh, very uh, nice to be able to use, uh, bleh, very compatible with uh, solving the cryptographic puzzles required to mine Bitcoin so then FPGAs came along and I can't remember what FPGA stands for <laughs> but uh, essentially that was the next of the third evolution in Bitcoin mining these were specific these were computers built pretty much specifically for mining Bitcoin there wasn't a lot of resale value because for graphics card miners if the next evolution came along they could just sell their graphics cards off and recover okay. some of their capital yep. costs right um, FPGA is more difficult to sell from what I understand then uh, where we, we arrive at where we're at now and that's application specific integrated circuits and there are companies that are built around uh, providing these application specific integrated circuits just for Bit- just for bitcoin just for bitcoin oh wow these are multi million dollar ventures so okay. would this mean that the the amount of bitcoins out there are going to increase dramatically because all these machines are coming onto the network that are going to be doing crazy amount. They're going to be mining Bitcoins crazily amount faster than previous. Right. It's a good question. And um, I, I know why you posed it. It's just because you want that answer out there. <laughs> but uh Essentially, what happens is the more computing power, like I said, we compete our, our two computers yep. with 100 points of power. We're competing for that same amount of Bitcoin. Yes. So I guess there wouldn't be more Bitcoins, right? Actually, for I think it's, um, I can't remember, I think for about an hour before the network adjusts, I can't remember what it is, but there is a point where Bitcoins are actually mined uh, a lot faster. Okay. Then the network adjusts the difficulty to bring I was, uh, that the was my That was my next question. I was going to ask you, how does it know and how does, how does the network adjust? Who pushes the button to make it so... Uh, all of a sudden the thing is doing that much harder right so nobody actually pushes a button right it's just the network under there it's coded into bitcoin that uh, the issuance rate is supposed to be so much right okay it's it's supposed to be so slow because it's it's an artificially created scarcity so Mm -hmm. it's it's there you go i love that (laughs) that that's why bitcoin is so beautiful because it's creating that artificial scarcity um one the one thing that i when i just i I clicked into Bitcoin. I was like, wait, there's only going to be 21 million or 22 billion Bitcoins ever. I mean, it's going to be naturally deflationary. I'm going to go get me some Bitcoins right now. And actually, you know, it's, it's interesting to note that that, that 21 million number will probably never be hit, right? Because the way Bitcoin works is um, it used to be when Bitcoin started, um, Bitcoin blocks were worth 50 Bitcoin. So if you mined a block of Bitcoin, you got 50 Bitcoins, right? Um, now Bitcoin blocks are worth 25 because okay. once you hit uh, 10 and a half million, 
you had half of the currency issued, so half, uh, so it, okay, it cut it yeah. in half. Yeah. Every every fifty percent increment that uh, Bitcoin hits in terms of total issuance, the the blocks will be cut in half. So uh, now the blocks are at twenty five. The next uh, halving will be what's it twelve point five, right? So twelve point five bitcoins huh. per block, and, and then it gets exponentially harder each time too. Yes, it gets exponentially harder, and the issuance rate becomes slower. So it's like an exponentially declining curve over time as to how many bitcoins will be issued uh, in in those 10 minute increments okay so i remember you talking about these what's the acronym as asics asics so you said that um you were and you wanted to get an asic and you wanted to be able to mine bitcoin because you would you would have been able to uh if you were on the network before lots of the other ones you were going to be able to make more money uh, why is that i don't quite understand right. so essentially what it is these these asics are uh very powerful in regards to how much how many cryptographic puzzles they can solve in a given second okay so my computer does like 150 Mega hashes, mega yeah, hashes. You, okay, okay, yeah. So your your computer does. There, there's kilohashes, mega hashes, giga hashes, terahashes, and each one is essentially a uh, one thousand multiple of the of the one before it. Okay, right. Um, so your computer does what do you do? 150 mega hashes yep. per second, right? Um, these uh, uh, ASICs will do anywhere from uh, five to uh, I, I think I saw one for 60. 60. No. Oh, actually, that was that was one of the normal ones. There's one out there that does 1.5 tera hashes per Whoa. second. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so here's here's what this was. <laughs> these awesome. there are there are, I think four companies, four major companies that were trying to ship these things first, and one finally made it out ahead of the rest of the pack, and that was uh, Avalon, I think, okay. uh, a company out of China. Now. What they did, it basically, when you get, if you were the fortunate soul who got that very first ASIC machine, uh, you would have had more hashing power than uh, everybody else, right? Well, not everybody else combined. Yeah. You would have just had a very large a chunk large of hashing percentage, power. yeah, okay. Right. So, uh, essentially, you, you'd have a, a larger share of the total mining uh, power on the network. Mm -hmm. So, you get more Bitcoins, right? If you're okay. part of a mining pool, you share in those profits. It's, okay, that's a different... Anyway, um, so basically there's a great incentive to get these computers to market first, right? You, whoever gets them to market first gets uh, the best credibility in the market for providing these ASICs, and mm. whoever gets their hands on these ASICs first are going to have the quickest return on investment because they paid so many thousands for these machines, yep. and then they get to mine Bitcoin at a very, very increased uh, rate of mining power so they get more coins than uh, people generally do. So the prices of these rigs are going to decrease uh, Over time. again because you're not going to be able to have that much of a return. And the, pr and the price of Bitcoins is going to increase crazily, hopefully. <laughs> um, but the, um, the amount of um, the hashing power is going to – or the hashing power is going to increase – Yes, so, hashing power will increase, hmm. and that, and then also difficulty will increase, yeah. right? And so, that's all figured out by the network. It's not figured out by some guy behind the computer that that's decides right. it. The network, basically, what the network does is it finds its equilibrium between the amount of computing power that's being applied to solving cryptographic puzzles and the number of bitcoins issued for that computing power. It, it's just, it just seems like it's such a natural market mechanic, right, that is being applied to making a scarce resource. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. And I don't think we're going to get to talk about our last <sighs> subject, Ethan. We're yeah. running up against a 30-minute mark. Yeah. But guess what? That just means that people who have not heard about our main podcast <laughs> can go to our main podcast yeah. and listen we talk to that about, other we, story. We talk yeah, about we, that we story. we talk about this in our, our B list. Did, did we have any? Yeah, I guess that's it, hey? Jeez. <laughs> we ran out of we ran out of time. But you you explained everything really well there. It was really good. Well, I, I hope so. I, I don't know. You I know, understood it more now than I did before. It's there there are people before. I think out there who are probably a little bit better at this than I, and, and hopefully we'll be able to get them on. Our hey, you know what? You were on the radio, man, talking yeah. about Bitcoin. I was so. on the news talk radio station machine, and I talked things there. I was good at it. <laughs> and you were, and you did. You got compliments from the I, bosses, so that's I, it cool. It was funny. There, you know, uh, uh, the guy who interviewed me, he's a veteran broadcaster here in Saskatoon. I mean, he's been in the radio business for eons. Mm -hmm. No offense mm -hmm. to him. He's, he's been around a while. He's got lots of experience. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, he was so pumped about that, to find out about cryptocurrency and, and digital 
digital currency. Like he's he's big on the cashless society. Yeah, I didn't yeah. quite like how it was it was framed because he said you know a cashless society, and I was just well, like yeah. yeah you know, that's it's where not, he's coming at it from. That's okay. Yeah, he's, I know. He's it discovering just, this new idea. That's great. I know. It just didn't seem like yeah. I just didn't like the framing. But anyway, yeah. it's all, all good. right. Well, anyway, I think that's uh, that's our Bitcoin cast for the main show. Go to edneathan.com where you can find our three hour long podcast if you want to hear us jabber on to no end. <laughs> I think that's pretty much good enough. We, for we this. get some other people on too. It's not just us. Yeah, that's true. We do have guests and all that. All right. This is Ed and Ethan's Bitcoin Cast. <laughs> <laughs>